Okay, so cool. Now we've got that established. How are you immortal? You are a 4D being. You are a space-time being. Just by existing, you are a space-time being. You aren't just Joe, right? <laughs> sort of going through time. You're this being that is spread out through space-time. There's variants of you. So the second video I have on my Instagram channel is I say, every time you learn something new, you die. I really want to remove any fear around this world death. The only thing that's bad about death is that right now we just don't have the technology to interact with past variants of people we love. If all of time is now and you are a four-dimensional being, then that means that you are located in space-time at just particular periods. Okay? So from my birth to now, there's different variants. There's baby Joe, there's teenage Joe, there's young adult Joe, there's adult Joe. Okay? It's my consciousness that is weaving all these different forms. I go to sleep, I wake up in the form. I'm, I'm Joe for today, and then the Joe tomorrow, and then the Joe, da, 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 da. And, the, and there's this consistent material being. There's my avatar, or you call Joe Lee, or whatever, right? But it's not, I'm not the body. The body is a vehicle in which I'm experiencing this reality, but the I is the me. Does that make sense? If I were to die yesterday, okay? All that means is to a time traveler, if they wanted to have a conversation with a particular variant of Jolie, yeah? After a particular date, Jolie no longer exists in this timeline. We're not talking about the like many world interpretation right now. I'm just talking about in this particular timeline from my birth to August 7th, 2024. Okay, if I died August 7th, 2024. Okay, somebody with a time machine, they wanted to find Joe they would just have to search between 1995, September 5th. It's not when I was born. 1995, I just made that up. Till August 7, 2024. Any variation of Jolie that they want to interact with, they have a time machine, they can set the coordinates to that particular date and then go and talk to that version of Joe in this reality. Now, we're weaving in quantum immortality and the many worlds interpretation, okay? I could cease to exist in this reality. Joe Lee could cease to exist. You can remember the episode I talked about where I said death only happens to other people. People all around me in this reality could see that, oh no, Joe died. But I, who I really am, my consciousness, I would have no idea that I had died. I would just go, oh shit, that was a close call. And I would go, oh, I had a near-death experience. And then that near-death experience was actually a death experience. But because consciousness cannot experience death, my consciousness just shifted into another, or like a, an avatar of Jolie in a parallel universe where I survived whatever everybody else in this universe experienced me dying from. And for more explanation of, okay, what happens to the bodies that you shift into and the consciousness, please go get my book. It's in the book. Yeah. So you're living in a simulation available on Amazon. So consciousness never experiences death. Now I'm saying that and I'm saying it with my chest, but now here comes the science. Quantum immortality is a concept in quantum mechanics suggesting that a conscious observer cannot die in any possible universe. Instead, they continue to exist in parallel realities where they survive any event that would otherwise be fatal. This is ChatGPT. This idea stems from the many worlds interpretation where every possible outcome of a quantum event occurs in a separate branching universe. The idea that consciousness cannot experience death suggests that consciousness by its nature cannot perceive or be aware of its own cessation. Since death would evolve the end of consciousness, the state of being dead is never experienced by the conscious mind, leading to the idea that from the subjective perspective, one is always alive. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, only modified. Consciousness cannot be created or destroyed, only modified. You will never experience death. There is forgetfulness. There is unconsciousness with one is always alive. This concept is often linked to theories in philosophy and quantum mechanics, such as quantum immortality. Okay. So if I were to die August 7th, 2024, I don't actually stop existing. It's just, you cannot interact with me after a particular date. My consciousness can continue to snake on into a parallel universe. And then if you happen to have a machine that can not only travel through time, but also through parallel universes, which I wonder if the TARDIS, I don't think the TARDIS can do. Yes, it can. Oh my God. What the fuck? <laughs> there was literally in the season with, uh, was it David Tennant's doctor went to a parallel universe. Yeah. And that was, guys, that was terrible. I'm a terrible Hoobian. Yeah. If you had a TARDIS, you could also travel through different 
dimensions in space, time and relative dimension in space. Shame on me. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Anyway, back to the conversation. Right. So if you had a TARDIS or something an equivalent of a TARDIS, right, you could still find me in a parallel universe where I just kind of went on. Like, I don't think you guys are really deeping how fucking amazing we are. It means that because all of time is now, all variants of me is now, my consciousness is existing through all of these variants of me in space time. That's not even counting like past lives, the same consciousness. So you wake up in the morning, you look in your face and you go like, oh, this is me. I'm this small, insignificant thing. This is what they keep fucking telling us. And it's absolutely bullshit. Like once again, time travel, we already explained, like, look, it is possible. Okay. So if I had a time machine, I can go back and I can talk to my grandmother. All variants of her exist right now from when she was born in 1930 to when she passed in the late 2000s. Her consciousness is, is kind of spread out throughout all of these days. So she's not this one. She's my grandma across all of like space and time. And then if you take that and you blow it up and you take the idea of the Brahmin, that we are all one, like then we are all one spread out through space and time, everything, everywhere, all at once, everything, everywhere, all at once, everything, everywhere, all at once. Take it out, wear the macro, bring it back in. You're constantly shifting. How many near-death experiences have you had that were actually death experiences? And you're just leaving a trail of bodies in your wake, like a Rick and Morty episode. It's kind of fucked up with the people who like different variants of like your loved ones. That are... But then I wonder if there's some twin souls that just shift together. They don't even realize a different conversation anyway. But yeah, like you're not this, you're not this one thing stuck in one past, one present, one future, and then you die. Like your consciousness is strewn throughout space time and not just now but also the future now and also the past now you're like this one snake snake like entity like an uroboros through space time monday joe tuesday joe wednesday joe because your consciousness would have to exist throughout all of these variants of space time and and maybe you're just so big that you can't even be confined like you're so much of a powerful fourth dimensional entity that you've literally been fractured through space time, the fragments contain the whole and the whole contains a fragment. You're, you're like a hologram, you're spread out. And each day of you is just one fractal of this grand entity, this grand consciousness that is like you. And then they, they go on TV and they tell you that you're nothing and you believe that shit. Like literally you are spread out through space time. If I wanted to go back and interact with you from the year 2003, like I get in my little TARDIS, and I go and talk to you, but you're, there's a consciousness there. Maybe as you've moved through space time, you've become more and more like that consciousness has grown, right? In intensity or whatever, but there's still a fragment. You're leaving fragments of your consciousness through space time, which should say just how powerful you are, how magnanimous you are, how beautiful a human being is. Human being, as in you are being, you are B-E-I-N-G, to be in the state of being throughout space time. Nobody fucking dies. You don't die. There's just a moment in which, in one reality, you can't be accessed anymore. But as I said, consciousness never actually dies. So you just near that experience shift, near that experience shift, 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 shift. That's why I start my book talking to you saying you are a shifter. That's what we actually are. We are shifting through space time in different forms, all of these bodies, having all of these experiences and you're boom, 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 traveling through space time. This idea this, uh, of locality is an illusion. Nobody actually dies. <laughs>